Hey, and welcome to Connect with Scripture. My name is Jason Hildebrand, and we are so excited that you have joined us today as we again dive into the life of David. Uh, a quick reminder on our YouTube our YouTube page, please um, subscribe and ring the bell so you can get our updates. Um, and as we prepare this this uh, this day. Just want to take, give yourself a moment. Uh, I know uh, I, I repeat this over and over again every week, but uh, I find myself very busy in the midst of this crazy thing called pandemic, and I need to just slow everything down and receive, allow Holy Spirit to breathe in me and through me. And so just take a moment, breathe in, breathe out again, just... Invite and release. Give yourself permission to be still and to be connected into what's going on inside yourself. Uh, give yourself permission to hear what God might want to speak to you. Well, today it is my great joy to invite my very good friend Mark Buchanan to the to the show. Mark and I have been friends for so many years now. I don't even know how long it is, um, but we met. I, I don't even remember where we met. Maybe it was on the on the on the East Coast. I'll I'll get him to share that in a second. But Mark is an author, uh, a speaker, a professor. Uh, Genuine, amazing guy, and I have so much deep love and respect for Mark and his work. And so, why don't we just welcome on now? Uh, welcome, Mark Buchanan. Hey, there he is, all the way from Calgary. Yeah, <laughs> good. Doing, so friend? good to meet you. Too. I always enjoy it. Yeah, it's so, such a treat. I every time uh, I always find that every time uh, Mark and I are together, something fun goes off. Like you know, when I come to your house and we hang out, God shows up in the most interesting ways. Always. Yeah, it's and, so good. Uh, so you and your wife are just amazing and and, and uh, love you so much. So uh, what's really cool about today is that Mark uh, has been in the middle of David's story for a number of years and uh, has finished writing the first of a trilogy of books on David. This first book was called David Rise, and it's incredible, and I love it. And uh, and I'm so looking forward to the second and third one. Uh, t talk to talk to me maybe just a, just for a minute, Mark, about that experience of diving into David. Well, when I first became a Christian at 21, so that's going back 40 years, I fell in love with with two characters in the Scripture right away: uh, Paul uh, because of his mind, and David because of his heart. And yet I also saw that there were things in David's heart. You know, anyone who lives without much passion, that sometimes passion goes in the wrong area. <laughs> yes. And uh, But I, I, so his story very early became both a, a source of inspiration, but also warning to me. Right. Um, as I think it's written to be. But I immersed myself in that story. And then I preached a lot when I was a pastor. Now that I'm a professor, I teach a full three credit course on the life of David. But finally I had to, because I'm a writer, I had to do something more, more creative, I think, with this story. And it's one of those stories, Jason, as you know, because uh, in fact, you've been a massive inspiration in terms of your interpretation of the David story. Uh, it's one of those stories that um, invites us to imagine what else is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot we're told and a lot we're not told. And so it's it, it's those kind of stories and and Jewish, uh, you know, people, Jewish commentators, readers of, of scripture in, in Judaism for centuries have had this practice called the Midrash, where they try to imagine what was going on in the bits that we're not told about. Right. And it's a, it's an ancient practice. And so in some ways, in some ways, you and I are Midrashists. We take the story and we think, well, what? You know what else was going on right. at that moment? Yeah, yeah. I know we're going to talk a little bit about the the David Abigail story. I mean, I love the way you you've rendered that in in your portrayal of David. That there's some stuff going on there. There's some stuff for sure. I yeah. I, I mentioned this last week when I read that that por that portion because we're coming right out of uh, David and Abigail and about to go into uh, next week. Saul, uh, David stealing the the spear yeah. and the and the bull from Saul but i just love that this woman stops an entire 400 men with a bunch of baking 
Like, I just think it's the most hilarious <laughs> thing. You know, nothing like getting out a man's heart than a bunch of really good food. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, cheese and crackers or whatever. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, and, and, then, and then doing the whole, you know, I do it in my show like a Southern Southern Belle, but, you know, batting her eyes, probably bring it down the bale a little bit. Oh, going, there, there's, yeah, there's a bit of flirtation or something happening there. There's, there's a little bit of flirtation same. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's trying to survive though too. That's the other thing. Oh, no, I mean she's 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 one savvy woman. Uh, in fact, I, I've often seen my wife Cheryl as a kind of Abigail. Like I'm this sort of big blunt ox of a guy, just kind of blundering <laughs> around, wanting to sort of kill whoever insulted me. And she sort of kind of knows how to how to kind of you know get me talk, talk the gun out of my hand. Oh my goodness. Well, today we're going to read uh, Psalm 112. I was trying to find a psalm that kind of fit between Abigail mm. and David stealing Saul's spear. Uh, and this one seemed to fit as I was looking through. Now, we're reading from a translation that you got me on to last week. Talk to me a yeah. little bit about that. Yeah, it's by Robert Alter. Alter is a great uh, Old Testament scholar, a Hebraist. So uh, the more recent work of of Alter, he's now in his late 80s, still actively writing, teaching. But Alter has for about 50 years been way uh, been an extraordinary source of wisdom for a lot of a lot of uh, Bible interpreters on uh, the Hebrew dynamics. So so how the language works. And his uh, life work is actually translation of the Old Testament in, in its much more compact. Uh, the readers, if they, if they listen to what we're about to read and compare it with, say, a, um, an English for, you know, like a NIV or something, yeah. they'll immediately recognize how, to use Alter's phrase, uh, Hebrew poetry has a kind of muscularity. It's it's got this. It's tightly wound, and and he captures right. that the cadences, the language choice, and so I I uh, have quite fallen in love with any trend. And he's just actually released the entire Old Testament about what? a year ago. Yeah, it's really expensive, so I'm kind of. I'm work sure. Well, I ordered I ordered the book uh, as soon as we talked. That it was like fifty bucks or something like that. So. Oh yeah, no, it's it's not cheap. So. But I have quite uh, smitten with how he he sort of works the language. The, it also is a commentary, and so then he'll mostly his commentary is why he chose that word or that phrase over the other right. one. And so, it, it, if uh, for those readers or listeners who are interested, it instructs you on good reading of scripture. Hmm. I can't wait. I mean, especially with my Psalms film project that we have coming up. Uh, I'm just really excited about getting into the kind of the meat of what's going on and, and, and actually I'll, allowing other actors to to kind of mine that stuff so that they can get yeah. in and really done a, do a good job of of, um, of speaking out whatever song yeah. they're performing. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm trying to get permission to, to, that? Go to for use. It. I'm trying to get permission from uh, Alter's publisher to use his translation uh, the second second book of the David series. Nice. Well, we may be we may be co we might be co go after them together. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's give this one a shot. Psalm well one twelve, okay. and we're just going to read back and forth a little bit. Like I love that I love the um, the device of chorus, especially in Greek Greek tragedy and and different things. And I think there's something about we have found over the last year of reading scripture that a lot of the meaningful stuff happens when we do it together. And we, and even though we're on zoom and you know, uh, thousands of kilometers apart, there's just something beautiful about, about almost being like a chorus going back and forth in the text. I love that. I, uh, yeah. Well said. Well, give it a shot. You start and I'll follow. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy the man who fears the Lord. His commands he keenly desires. A great figure in the land his seed shall be. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Abundance and wealth in his home and his righteousness stands forever. Light downs in darkness for the upright. Gracious and merciful and just. Good is a man who shows grace and lends. He sustains his words with justice. 
for he shall never stumble. An eternal remembrance the just man shall be. From evil rumor he shall not fear. His heart is firm. He trusts in the Lord. His heart is staunch. He shall not fear till he sees the defeat of his foes. He disperses. He gives to the needy. His righteousness stands forever. His horn shall be raised in glory. The wicked man sees and is vexed. He gnashes his teeth and he quails. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Man, I love his phraseology. Wow. Oh, oh, good. Just love it. Yeah, no, it's it's so punchy. Who says vexed and gnash and quail? I mean, that's just just so good. Robert Alter, <laughs> like he, he's he's such a great scholar of the language that he he fetches about you know you know that line in Ecclesiastes the the teacher search for just the right word and all his words were like uh, goads and like firmly embedded nails. When I read Alter, that's what I think of. He's mm. searching for the perfect match in. English for that Hebrew, not just the word, the the meaning, but the texture of it. I think one of the things that strikes me so much about the Psalms is that there's a whole lot of guttural groaning that comes out in the Psalms that I feel like a lot of the English translations miss. I feel like most of the time when I'm in the Psalms, I just want to go, like, it just feels like it's coming out of me in a groaning, you know what I mean? So, so well put. I mean, there's a kind of a hammering quality to the cadence or the, the sort of meter. Um, and he does, uh, Alter's earlier works are the art of biblical poetry and the art of biblical literature. Right. And so he examines, and they're very accessible. So if readers wanted the kind of an introduction, that would be a good place. But he shows uh, in those early works how Hebrew meter uh, works. There's a kind of a lilting quality to English meter. So especially you read a sonnet, it's got this kind of nice rise and fall. It's a hammering quality in the Hebrew. Hmm. And uh, we actually don't do it justice if we try to make it a too melodic. It is that sort of, oh, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. A lot of, I always, I always feel like it's like, a, I always feel like it's all about birth. Like it's just like you're growing oh, so- out. <laughs> Groaning out the stuff, right? Like David is like trying to, he's even trying to birth his suffering. Like he's, he doesn't yeah. know how to get it out. So it's like, a, ah, he's got to birth it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, um, it's ejaculatory. There's sort of this burst in this kind of, you know, sp- spitting out of things. Yeah. And uh, honestly, of all the translations I've read, nothing comes. Uh, and I don't, I don't, uh, I, I've lost all my, my kind of uh, seminary training in Hebrew. But I know enough, uh, you know, I work, I work with people who, are, who teach Hebrew, so I know enough about that to know that these qualities of it's, uh, that are more earthy, more guttural, mm. uh, have this kind of ang- this kind of soul anguish made mm-hmm. manifest in, in, the, in the language itself. Th- these are qualities of Hebrew language and poetry, and I have not come across anything um, there's uh, one uh, a writer, last name Stephen, who comes close, but but to me, Alter is kind of the pinnacle of it. Well, and I think even what's interesting about this particular psalm is that even though it's a little bit less like grunty and groany, you still yeah. have that feeling in it. Like you still have yeah. that kind of yeah. heart cry uh, thing that that comes. Like it never feels like David says. Well, I'm just walking down the street and it's all lovely yeah. and it's all good. You know, yeah. he's just full on in. All right, God, he's never going to yeah. stumble. He's never, well, he's like, he words like never and defeat. Yeah. And, I, know. I mean, a couple of things to point out technically. First of all, uh, you know, the, um, the great Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says all oh. of the songs, even the songs that are sort of more liturgical and they're kind of celebrating. Yeah, you know the so some great moment in Israel's history. He says all of the Psalms. The only way to approach them is to think of them as as our emotions in extremity. 
That's good. Uh, I, love so that. where I'm either really, really ecstatically happy and I'm happy dancing and I can't control myself and I'm just smiling and I just want to kiss everybody, yeah. or I'm utterly d distraught and I want the whole world to know just how miserable I am and I want Yahweh or God to know it especially. <laughs> and that that's a helpful orientation. It's a bit of an overstatement. But the other thing is that th this is one of the few psalms that's built on an acrostic. In, in other words, there's, uh, there's, there's, I think, three psalms. This one, Psalm 111 and Psalm 119, that are built on uh, an acrostic around the Hebrew alphabet. So each mm. line of this psalm, or the draw, the the dyads, the, the double sort of uh, lines, are mimicking, uh, or or they're they're built around a, a letter of the twenty-two letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet. That's so cool. partly, what you're noticing is it is a little more measured than some of the other psalms. Uh, interesting, the psalm uh, right before it, Psalm one eleven, are kind of almost treated by scholars as paired psalm wow. 111 is also a cross deck it's it's the same length and the difference is that psalm 111 is a celebration of the deeds and attributes of god whereas psalm 112 we just read is a celebration of the deeds and attributes of the man of god hmm. and they really beautifully pair together that's cool but they both have that acrostic kind of pattern or structure, and th therefore there, there's a controlling element in these psalms, may maybe almost like a sonnet. You know, you have uh, – right. or, or a haiku or whatever. Yeah, that's exactly what I was element. thinking. Sonnet. It's not free form. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you're, you're picking up that this isn't quite – you know, David kind of throwing himself writhing on the ground stuff, but there's still this emotional kind of That's weight right. to it. <laughs> Probably the influence of another person in his camp. <laughs> Somebody's like, you want to make it a little more structured? Can, can yeah. somebody make it yeah, a little more structured, right. please? Yeah. I'm just wondering. Yes, yeah, director, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, David, you're always all over the place. Can we just yeah, right. kind of break it down? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and the other thing, you know, this this obviously, and and maybe even listeners picked it up as we're uh, as as we're reading. This echoes in sometimes almost verbatim Psalm one, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's very much that kind of what is the destiny of the righteous? What is the destiny of the wicked? Uh, what? Wh why is the righteous man, the man who attends the law of God, or the the you know the word of God, the voice of God, a happy person? Why is endless misery await the person yeah, who doesn't yeah. do that. So it's very much kind of picking up some of that, oh, I love that. thematic content yeah, from yeah. Psalm 1. Cool. Well, Mark, thank you for uh, being on with us and just uh, so I, so much fun. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I love it. Anytime, man. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, appreciate your time and uh, – much love and huge blessings on you as you continue to write number two and all the other things you've got going on. And we look forward to catching up soon. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, everybody there, thank you so much for joining in with Connect with Scripture. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell. And we look forward to continuing on with you next week on The Life of David. Take care. God bless. Bye.